The temperatures right now are currently 54 degrees Fahrenheit with the wind blowing at 19 miles an hour. This is a sign because it's February. This is a sign that a big storm is about to come. And in preparation for this big storm, because it could spawn a gnarly tornado outbreak. I know every single tornado this year has at least been associated with a, a dangerous outbreak. I want to make sure that you know that, you know, this is, this is bad. This is a sign that a big storm is coming, though maybe not personally for us. So I want to let you know how you can be aware that a big storm is coming. First of all, check the humidity. I know in this case, the humidity isn't really super high, though I forgot to check for the dew point, but humidity will be a factor because if it's very humid outside and the dew point's high, it's typically fuel for a storm. However, you might not see this. I believe right now the dew point is in the um, 40s, which is very high for February. Typically in February, it's like in the 20s, 30s. So, 40s means there's a big storm that's about to come. Um, the, air, the air temperature will typically get very warm too. 54 degrees is very warm for February. So what happened was, was that, um, was that it, we had a very cold January after the January 2nd silent cold front. Silent cold front meaning that you don't have a big storm, you just go outside and it, and it, and it feels much colder. Um, but you go outside, you feel much colder. Now in, um, now in, um, now in the, um, as the months change, of course, these signs, you know, like in the summer, because it's always hot, sticky, and humid, and they don't always result in these cold fronts. These, so these summer storms can be um, a bit harder to pick up on, but in the other seasons, you should be able to pick up on it. So, in January, as you know, it's very cold, but February promised an instant warm up. So, what happened was that on February 3rd, you had your lows in the lower 40s, and the temperatures moved up to the upper 40s at night. Then, a storm comes. Temperatures get up to about 50 degrees at about 6 o'clock in the morning, which FYI, the, the fact that it happens at 6 o'clock in the morning is a sign. I know in January we had a, a big storm too. These both had our dangerous tornado outbreaks. They were winter storms Izzy and Landon, if you follow with the Weather Channel's names. Um, now with Izzy, it, wasn't, it, it, it was actually freezing the night the day before, and this could be a sign too. The fact that it goes from 9 degrees to 40 degrees in a single day might be a sign that... Um, might be a sign like like when you go out and it constantly feels warmer even after the sun goes down and the temperature begins to plateau then that could be a warning sign that a storm is about to come too and in this case temperatures actually continue to go up a bit after sundown and in that storm temperatures got to about 45 degrees humidity maxed out the wind gusts um here got to about 55 miles an hour and it was landing it didn't get as high landing was actually a a, a worse case because the cold front came not in the wake of the storm but as the storm progressed they from from 8 to 10 a.m the temperatures crashed 48 to 37 most of which in the first 30 minutes of that period and by 5 p.m it was icing out because it had, had froze and the storm still didn't leave nor did it convert to snow which is um doubly bad you do not want to be in those pesky ice storms um so I don't think we have a weather channel name for this for this specific storm yet. Um, I don't think we have a, a name for this specific storm yet. But what I do know is that these are signs. I mean, there's a, a tornado break that they're worried about too. These are signs that we're gonna ha have a big storm. And for example, when the dew points got to about 60 in Cedar Rapids, and the temperatures got to about 70. 374 that was a sign that a um a big storm was about to plow through and oh it did because by two o'clock in the morning temperatures were 38 degrees that is a sign that a mega storm has just plowed through your area sometimes these cold fronts can take longer i remember one time from january 7th to 8th 2014 here um from 7 a.m to 7 a.m temperatures went down from um 54 degrees down to 5 degrees and the high the next day 
was only 11. Well, actually, it was technically 27 because the temperature crash was so delayed that um, we didn't really feel the crash, like, at all um, until after sundown. And then, so, it's like on the 16th in Iowa, the high that day was about 38. The low got to about freezing. The high was technically 51 because you were still coming off of that cold front. So it takes time for that cold air to begin to settle in a bit, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and if I don't, well, I'm sorry, I'm a weather nerd. That's what we say. Anyway, um... Anyway, um... Anyway, so, these are signs that, like, a big storm can be coming when you have it unusually warm. Now, we had these warm, windy days where it got to the mid-50s. Today, I think I had a high of 57 in... February before the um on the I don't want to mess up the dates on the 10th, 11th, and 12th, and um the 12th actually got to like 59, if not even 60 degrees, but a dry cold front moved through that actually made Sunday stay entirely below freezing and with four inches of snow on the ground, which was um triple what the initial predictions were because the storm moved slowly and kept on bringing round after round after round after round of snow it's all melted now completely melted because monday was below freezing the whole day i don't know if it got above freezing on tuesday or not i know it did by wednesday where into the night it was you know above freezing and we didn't really have that much snow to begin with so it's all melted by now so for the first time since, um, I don't even know before, before January 28th, because, um, I don't know if, um, all of January 7th snow melted, but there, like, actually is no snow on the ground. It does not look like it's February outside, even though I can prove to you that it is. Thursday, February 17th. Oh, I've said, I find happy birthday then. Oh, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that later. Um. So, so, I have personally um, went through a bunch of dangerous storms in the last little while. So I want to tell you, these really don't work so well when it's a tropical cyclone. I know I'm going to give one example, but remnants are differently and oh my god. I just realized I'm going the wrong way to go home. I have to go back this way. I'm still 20 minutes from my house. Um, and, um... And, um, and a, um, and, God, how do I put this? Jeez. Ah, oh, how do I put this? How do I put this? Um, so, when Ida hit, you could feel changes. On the 27th of August, it was steaming. It, it, it was a 93 with a real feel of 102. Hottest day of the year. Um, hottest day of the year. And it was after you had some, like, 90, 91 days, it also began to feel like 100 degrees. Um, it was like literally cooking for a while. Because it was pretty warm in Sanri with days getting into the um, mid-80s. We also was getting upper 80s, lower 90s. And with Sanri, it cooled for a bit. Where you had a day that was pretty much entirely bottled in the 70s. But it was at max humidity. So... And with that being said, um, by the time on repulled, and it was 80 degrees at max humidity. Real feel, 89 degrees. Um, now, fortunately, Henri would um, quickly pull out of the region. and um, But in its wake, the tropical air mass brought with it, the de denigrating storm, actually made the heat wave worse. It was like when Barry struck where the real fields got into the 110s because you had 99 degree air temperatures coupled with um, 80 degree dew points. 
So it felt like in the one tens when when the remnants of Bally were coming over us, which actually did, which actually was more dangerous than Henri in a way because the remnants of Bally spawned to death in Connecticut, and the remnants of um of on uh, not the remnants and Henri uh, did not do so. Ida, of course, has remnants spawned over fifty deaths, uh, depending on where you begin to say where the Northeast impacts began, which can really go from Virginia to Pennsylvania, but. The remnants of the storm merged with the front and it was directly over New York City where this happened, leading to extreme rainfall rates. On we dumped more precipitation um, and about two thirds of it was in a single night. But Ida, about half of it, of it w was in a, a single hour. Um, half of it was in a single hour. So I, I, I know. There was a um, a sneaky cold front, so the high of the 20 to 79 degrees, that was at midnight, and then the actual high was um, 73, and, and then the low got to 66, and then the next day, got back to the mid-70s. Then it was 72 to 84, 72 to 85, with the rear field the first day hitting 91, the second day hitting about 88, and then, uh, and then September 1st comes, so new month a big storm on the way, because the highs would only be... Um, and I'm only going to give one example because that's all I'm going to give. Um, the highs would be 74, low 68. Dew points hovering in the 70s. But like the fact that it didn't get warm really and all this stuff happening meant that you could tell that the storm was about to come over us. And come over us it did as we had a major storm. Temperatures after it plummeted with it getting 61 the night after. And by the time that... um. And by the next, and, and with the highs beginning only to at 75, the next day um, got to a low of 57, high of about 77. As you began to get warm on to next week, 58 to um, 79 on that day, as it began to get warm again, and you would go up and down and up and down in the so called temperature roller coaster. And this would begin to happen until it um, finally subsided. One last note. Information for the November tornadoes has come out on the NCDC uh, website. So if you want to check out how much those tornadoes on New York cost, um, you could check there. I, the um, line of storm as a whole across three states caused nearly three million dollars in damage, given that it was a rather weak storm. Okay, I um I have nothing more to say. Goodbye.